Hi guys, and welcome back to the Carla Garrick Show. Today is episode 19, and as you can see, we are making incremental improvements. Hopefully you guys can see the mic. I also have a timer, but this time, of course, I have no script. So here we go again. But I'm delighted to be beaming back into your homes, into your YouTubes, into your ears. You can very, very clearly hear my voice now. So hopefully that will keep my fans happy. For those of you who've been missing me, it has been an incredibly busy time. I've been appearing on documentaries and talk shows and podcasts and all the good stuff. I also, over the weekend, went to keynote the Libertarian, Vermont Libertarian Convention uh, over in, uh, in Barrie, Vermont. Last time I said bar and uh, the internet let me know that that was incorrect. So even though you spell it that way, it is Barry Vermont and it was a really fun time and it was really great to connect with some libertarians that, you know, live in our mirror state over in Vermont. Uh, for those of you who follow someone like Tom Woods, who of course is a New York Times bestselling author and a wonderful podcaster, last week's Carla Garrick show was actually my last um, talk with Tom, and that'll become a regular quarterly thing. So you can catch up on that at the Tom Woods Show or on my YouTube channel, Carla Garrick TV. And uh, this week, we're going to be talking about some ridiculous stuff, as is always the case. Um, I am going to be doing a deep dive or at least a deep-ish dive uh, on the Hunter Biden laptop. I also thought it would be uh, sort of interesting to just briefly discuss that ridiculous Oscar show and the slap. So uh, for those of you who did not follow what happened on Sunday at the Oscars, or for those of you who are not on social media, here's a very quick rundown of a altercation that happened between Will Smith and Chris Rock. So Chris Rock was telling some jokes about Will Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, and I don't even know what the history is there, but apparently there is some uh, tri-romance stuff happening there. That's not really the important part or the part I want to talk about. I want to tell you about my latest crazy conspiracy theory. So apparently the Oscars were sponsored by all our big pharma uh, companies, you know, the Pfizer's of the world, so to speak. And um, Jada, the wife, who was wearing, by the way, the prettiest dress I've seen and one that I covet and would love to have. It was uh, emerald green, sort of high neck, tight with this just big, roughly beautiful thing towards the bottom cascading. So highly recommend uh, checking out a picture of that. But um, she apparently has had hair loss. Um, it's a autoimmune disease. And, you know, I'm speculating now. I'm entirely uh, open about that. But apparently one of the side effects from some of these uh, vaccines is, in fact, alopecia or hair loss. So I'm not sure if that's what happened to Jada, but Jada does have an autoimmune disease that suddenly started it in the past year and her hair has fallen out. So then apparently Chris Rock, who's a comedian, who was one of the three MCs from the Oscars, uh, made a joke about her hair. And this raised the ire of her husband, Will Smith, who then jumped up out of the audience, somehow the cameras were tracking all of this, stormed across the stage and slapped Chris Rock across the face. Now, I had to ask my husband, Louis, I was like, you know, if you got that mad that you are like storming onto the stage at the Oscars, would you go for a slap? 
Or would you go for a punch? So I thought the slap was interesting. I also thought the context of the slap was interesting when you consider that Will Smith had actually just won a little before that a uh, an award in which he gave this sort of rambling, Carla likes rambling speeches, don't get me wrong, but this sort of rambling speech where he was talking about love and spreading love and being a role model and everything. So it really seemed like a bit of a strange force dynamic that on the one hand, it was being said, oh, you know, let's spread the love. And I love that message. And then also like, you know, a little while later, jumping up, storming across the stage and uh, attacking another person. I do want to put this a little bit in context as well, because I think the internet is slightly confused about what happened here. So um, that was an assault. It was a violent response with violence to words, and not only words, but comedic words. Now, whether you find a joke funny or not, I get that that is relative, but, you know, within the context of the Oscars, Chris Rock was telling a joke. It was maybe a joke in bad taste, but Will Smith responded with violence. That is assault. That is assault that was captured on camera, that was viewed by, I don't know, the four people who still watch the Oscars. And um, and then the internet was kind of like torn. So some people are saying it's assault. Some people are saying it's not assault. Some people are saying it's an appropriate response to words is violence. I want to break it down just briefly from a libertarian perspective, which is that um, it is a violation of the NAP. But the question becomes, when you violate the NAP, which is the non-aggression principle, which means that you should only use violence defensively, it, it, it doesn't mean we're... Um, you know, there is no room for, for violence, but that you have to be very careful about when you employ it. Now, when you violate the NAP, the real question becomes, what are the consequences of those actions? So when I posted a, a, a photo of this on Twitter, I actually, or on Facebook, I think, I asked several questions. And some of those questions were things like, um, so if you're saying that uh, you can use violence against words, which is what some people are positing, then you're saying that, um, so, so then it's like, okay, what are the consequences of that slap? So the question becomes, what would have happened if Chris Rock had hit Will Smith back? And now we have a melee on the stage of uh, the Oscars. I mean, probably be great for ratings. Apparently, this might have all been staged for ratings. So again, we have the vaccine manufacturers sponsoring the Oscars. We have known parties of people who may or may not have had dalliances. We have uh, the response to the joke that is violent, and now everyone's talking about it. Also, it turns out that Big Pharma is working on some miracle solution for this particular kind of hair loss. Now, maybe a less uh, suspicious person would think that all makes perfect sense. Uh, someone like me who likes to dabble in connecting strange dots, as we will be doing with Biden's uh, laptop in a hot second, uh, then... The question becomes, was all of this actually staged? Was this something that is a PR stunt from beginning to end to draw attention to new products that Big Pharma may be dropping? I don't know, but, you know, I think it's worth asking the question. Just to circle back in the last uh, minute or so I have in this segment, uh, the idea is that if someone violates the non-aggression principle, then you have to look at what the response is and what the appropriate response is. The question here would also be, would your answers be different if it had been Jada who walked onto the stage and, and punched or slapped the uh, Chris Rock? Or if someone had pulled out a knife and stabbed someone, would that have been appropriate? So really, I just want you to think a little bit about what went down and then think about whether, uh, you know, this is something we should just let slide. Um, it was an assault. It was an assault that was captured on camera. And I find it fascinating that the entire world seems to think that's 
okay. So, what's up with that Hunter Biden laptop? All right, so here's the scoop. First of all, why do I care about this? I'll tell you why I care about it, besides all the obvious reasons. The first social media bans I started to catch, and this was a little bit before COVID, was actually because of these laptops, this laptop. So the story broke, you know, a few weeks before the election. And because everyone suffers from Trump derangement syndrome, uh, folks were just like, oh, we're not even going to talk about this. But basically what happened was there was this guy in Delaware who runs an Apple laptop store. And this dude was like, yo, Hunter Biden dropped off this laptop and it's got some shady stuff on it. Hunter Biden also failed to pick up the laptop. And this gentleman who worked at this computer store then sent it or gave it to the FBI. And then the entire establishment, deep state, fake news guys were like, nope, this is Russian disinformation. None of this is true. We can't do it. The president, Biden, is actually on record saying, oh, I had no idea about this. This is all untrue, blah, 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 right? So now we have this giant conspiracy. There were also 50 intelligence assets and intelligence people, uh, uh, sources, who were like, nope, this is Russian disinformation. All right. So then let's fast forward. Now America is involved in a war in the Ukraine against, well, America is involved in a war. So, you know, the, we're, we're working with NATO and there's all this stuff. Sure, we don't technically have boots on the ground. Although in 2014, there was a coup d'etat in the Ukraine that was, for all intents and purposes, fostered by the CIA and our intelligence agency. So that's sort of like a mild little quick background. Now there's this war in the Ukraine. And turns out there are bio labs in the Ukraine that are being funded by the American Department of Defense. And so what I'd like to do is I'm now going to play you a video that I believe came out yesterday. It's Tucker Carlson, and he's just sort of giving a little bit of a quick rundown on these actual bio labs. So initially people said, oh, that's a conspiracy theory. That's not true. But then um, the Under Secretary of State, I think, um, anyway, some lady did do a congressional hearing and she said, oh yeah, we do have bio labs there, uh, but fear not, you know, everything's above board. So here's just a brief clip and then we can talk further. Over this weekend, this show obtained a number of documents from a former high-ranking U.S. official that show the U.S. government through the Pentagon did in fact fund research into deadly pathogens in Ukraine. According to one of the documents, sometime between 2007 and 2008, quite some time ago, the Pentagon approved the development of a, quote, multi-pathogen mapping project to, among other things, quote, take molecular fingerprinting of pathogens endemic to Ukraine and strain transfer. So it turns out what we reported all along was correct. The Pentagon is, in fact, researching pathogens in Ukraine. We're still not exactly sure on why. The explanations they've given us are ridiculous. We don't know how long this has been going on, but we know it dates back at least 14 years. Now, we reached out to the Pentagon to see why the DOD was researching pathogens and if the research involved biological weapons, which we can tell you categorically it did. And they pointed us to a fact sheet that the Pentagon released almost two weeks ago that is filled with lies and that lots of Pentagon reporters dutifully repeated as if it were true. So the fact sheet tells us that since 2005, the Pentagon has spent $200 million in something called the Cooperative Threat Reduction Program in Ukraine. Now, that program supposedly is designed to dismantle Soviet-era bioweapons. But wait a second. How long does it take to dismantle Soviet-era bioweapons? And in fact, if those are the only deadly pathogens in the labs, why would it be worried that the Russians could get them because they would already have them? None of it made any sense at all. We should tell you that in the Pentagon's response to us, they did not deny the existence of multi-pathogen mapping that was mentioned in the memo we 
retained, nor did they refute the memo's existence. We also got a set of documents from the Ukrainian government. That group of documents lists 30 biolabs in Ukraine that got funding from the U.S. Pentagon. According to these Ukrainian documents, these facilities use the funding for research and the collection and storing of specimens. What's interesting is the Pentagon did not deny that it funded any of these facilities. <clears throat> in fact, the Pentagon's own fact sheet says as many as 46 Ukrainian labs got funding from the United States. 46 labs, really? We also learned a few days ago that the U.S. government was not only doing this, but other people were funding it as well, which is to say the research of some kind into deadly pathogens in Ukrainian labs. So we learned, thanks to reporting from the National Pulse several days ago, that Hunter Biden's personal investment firm got money to researchers who are working on, quote, isolating deadly pathogens in Ukraine. Now the Daily Mail is reporting that emails on Hunter Biden's laptop confirm that that story is true. So again, we're not exactly sure what this means or where it goes, but ask yourself, in 2014, 2015, did you realize that Joe Biden's son was helping fund some sort of research into deadly pathogens in Ukraine, which is not exactly a hotbed of biomedical research. Why Ukraine? Why not Germany? Why not Japan? Why not a first world country? There's clearly something going on here and we have the right to know. Sorry, we do. Josh Boswell broke the story for Daily Mail and we're happy to have him join us tonight. Josh, thanks so much for coming on. I'm sure you've been denounced for writing this news story. Um, so thank you for doing it anyway. What did you learn? Well, first off, I, I want to make clear that um, the Russian government is clearly pushing a, a propaganda line to try and justify their war in Ukraine, right? They're saying that the American government was working on uh, bioweapons in Ukraine. I do not have evidence of that specifically, but I do have a lot of other very interesting evidence which we should be asking a lot of questions about. So what do we know right now? Well, we know, as you said, that the U.S. was um, funding these uh, bio labs in Ukraine, that they were looking at deadly pathogens. We know that Hunter Biden was uh, helping raise money for funding one of the companies involved in that called Metabiota. Um, and we also know from my reporting emails from Hunter Biden's laptop that not only was he involved in funding that company, but he was also involved in getting that company into Ukraine, getting it deals that it needed uh, to be done to, to do the work it was trying to do. So, for example, there are meetings that he had with executives from Metabiota. And it's really interesting the way that the executives speak in those emails. Um, they, they say that they wanted to help assert Ukraine's cultural and economic independence from Russia which I found kind of odd for a company that is supposed to just be monitoring um, disease data, pandemic data. Um, you know, why are they trying to also assert Ukraine's independence? Um, <laughs> There's also um, a, a quote-unquote science project that Hunter and his business partners pitched to uh, the Ukrainian gas firm Burisma, allegedly corrupt firm, um, that he was working with at the time. And um, this science project I involves uh, getting Metabiota some kind of deal in Ukraine and maybe using Burisma's high-level government contacts in Ukraine um, to get that done. Uh, we also know that um, the funding that Metabiota received um, totaled $18.4 million from the Department of Defense. Uh, a small portion of that, uh, $307,000, goes to, quote, re Ukraine research projects, uh, according to DOD records and government funding records. Um, so there's a lot of questions here. Why was Hunter involved in this, especially at a time, 2014, when his father, Joe Biden, the vice president then, was in charge of foreign policy in you, towards Ukraine for the U.S. It, it's surely at least a conflict of interest there. Well, it's so unbelievably corrupt. I could care less what the government says of Russia about anything. I don't believe the government of Russia. I care about the government of the United States, which I help pay for. So these are fair questions. I'm grateful that you unearthed them, and I hope you'll keep going. Josh Boswell of Daily Mail. Thank you. Thank you. Now, love him or hate him, you have to admit that these are legitimate questions that we should be asking. It certainly sounds at a minimum like Hunter Biden had a conflict of interest, as did his father, the sitting president of the United States of America, and that there is at a minimum something super super fishy happening in the Ukraine. I think we are only starting to understand the tip of what this is all about, but hopefully I will be able to bring you more news. Now we cannot 
And we should not rely on the deep state and the people propagating the fake news to tell us what is going on. Hopefully part of what I can do is to show you that while we may not have the full answers yet, we do and should be asking questions. So the questions that have also started to bubble up is there have been congressional hearings about Hunter's laptop. Now, I will tell you, just circling back to the whole issue about catching my first bends, um, you know, I'm a huge proponent of free speech. In fact, one of the shows we did in the last two weeks was with PBS to talk about government transparency and openness. And I think next week on the Carla Garrick show, that'll be episode 20. I'm going to be doing a deep dive into the Lori's list here in New Hampshire, kind of give you guys a rundown on all of that. I did see in today's paper, uh, for folks following along, the former police chief of Nashua is in fact on that's Lori's list. He admits he did do some shady stuff, but you know, he admitted it. So now it's all good. I'm a big proponent of forgiveness. But, you know, we need to be able to hold our elected officials accountable. And so this congressional hearing that is happening up there in the swamp in D.C. And just also, I like to use these words because they're descriptive. It doesn't mean I'm a Trumpian for whoever is into that kind of stuff. I said it at the Libertarian convention this weekend in Vermont, you know, there are certain words that are gifts because they're sort of bumper sticker long. And so I use these words because they are good uh, descriptors and good placeholders for things. But I want to show you guys one more clip. And this is actually... Um, it's from the congressional hearings. So they basically, they had some guy from the FBI there from cyber crimes, I believe. And he was humming and hawing as they can only do. I almost wonder why we even have these hearings anymore. Um, it's very hard to get to the truth. Or even when the truth comes out, it's pretty hard to get people to actually really care about it. But here is a just a great moment. And really, it's about a minute long. The question I want you to ask yourself about this clip is why you haven't seen it on the news, why you haven't seen it anywhere else, why you have to be tuning in to the Carla Garrick show with, you know, my millions and millions of viewers to find out about these things. It does mean that the media is failing me and you. It does mean that the media, uh, the news, all of it has been corrupted and that this conflict of interest that we're talking about is so vast. And it's so vast because the government's too big. That is why all this stuff is happening. It's because the balance between us and the people who claim to rule us is entirely out of balance. So to just set up this clip, it is about a minute long and it, uh, it pretty much speaks for itself. But again, ask yourself why you haven't seen this on the regular news. Is the first family sufficient cyber infrastructure to protect? You don't even know if they're compromised. Tell you what, Mr. Chairman. I seek unanimous consent to enter into the record of this committee the contents of Hunter Biden's laptop, which I'm in possession of. I'm not. Hmm? There's no objection to that. Wait, wait. So I can't say no objection. I've, ne I've never had. I will so object long. pending further uh, investigation. And what's the basis of that objection? It's a unanimous consent request, and I object pending. Very well, further. I have a subsequent question. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I seek unanimous consent to enter into the record the receipt. It may very well be. From the Mac entered, shop. It may very well be entered into the record after we look at it further. Very well, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, Mr. I have a subsequent unanimous consent. 
Now, if like me, you're pretty shocked by this. I mean, kudos to that guy. I think it's Gates. Um, I, I don't know. I don't keep up with the, the 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 people there in D.C. for the most part, just because all they're doing is stealing our money, stealing our liberties, and making life worse for the average American. But kudos to this guy for for doing that. Um, he had been talking to the the cyber unit. FBI guy and um, and the guy was just saying, oh, you know, I can't comment on the laptop and whatever. But what you also saw here is they're introducing. So now we have um, senators and people up in D.C. who are introducing um, evidence that the FBI is pretty much claiming they either don't have or they don't want to look at or whatever. And then you see the the chairman of that committee is flamoxed. He's like, oh, oh, crap. I don't know what to do. I don't want this to be put into the record, but, you know, here we are. So so you saw a little bit of his mild panic there. So I'll be sure to follow this and to see what comes of this. I also caught another ban over the weekend. I was banned off Twitter for, uh, I think it was like three days. I didn't really notice because I was so busy over the weekend. But when I tried to log in, and it turns out I got banned off Twitter for more photos that allegedly are off Hunter Biden's laptop. Now, I have to tell you, when little old me is just sharing random stuff and getting banned off social media... And I actually, I did um, appeal the ban from Twitter. And so the way they do it is they tell you, you're banned for X amount of time. You're banned for these particular posts that you made. It was the same photo. And then one other thing that I didn't even check, but I'm going to assume it was also from there. And... Um, and they're like, you have a choice. You can either delete those posts, in which case you can get access back to your account in a few hours, or you can appeal. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to appeal. So I appealed and I told them they should stop censoring information uh, that, <laughs> you know, we should have free speech. Now I understand it's a private company, all of that. But you know what? They get certain protections. So if they want to be a private company that can ban speech, then they don't get protections from the government for uh, for their behavior. You can't have both of those things. Uh, that is actually also a conflict of interest. So in any event, I appealed it. When they responded to the appeal, they came back and they said, you violated these community standards. And there was a semicolon. And then just they didn't give the community standards that I ostensibly violated. These photos that I shared appear to be um, Hunter Biden with what appeared to be uh, underage children. Now, I don't know. I just saw them and they shocked me enough that I was willing to share them. They could be photoshopped, but they could probably be accurate. Given how scared people are and how much they're trying to hide this information, I'd say it's probably accurate. But who knows? Let's see if the media picks up on the story and actually does their job and comes back and tells us the truth. But here's what I'll leave you with for this week. These are the people running this country, and it's gross. I mean, Hunter Biden, the photos that everyone agrees are actually real, uh, you know, crackhead, broken teeth. I mean, just a mess. Now we know their financial things going on with the Ukraine. We do know the president is somehow involved. And all of this just seems like we should get to the bottom of the story. So stick around. I will be following this over the months to come. And in the meantime... Um, I just would like to thank you for joining me again for the Carla Garrick Show. Uh, we're still iterating. Next week, as I mentioned, I hope to do a bit of a deep dive on the Lori's list, give you a little bit of the history. Uh, I saw a tweet go by from NHPR that said the list has now been released. So we'll get into that and see what is up with uh, the Popo here in New Hampshire, figure out how to keep our government officials accountable, because without accountability, 
you get the crap we see now. So until next time, thank you so much for joining me for this edition of The Carla Garrick Show. Remember, together we can live free and thrive. Peace out, guys. <laughs>